Over the last few years, we've seen some really fun co-op-centered games not just show up, but actually take the gaming space by storm. Helldivers 2, Lethal Company, Sea of Thieves, just to name a few. In a world full of AAA giants pushing out games with what they say are the best graphics, most innovative gameplay, and all of those buzzwords, why is it that AA or even indie games focused around co-op fun are the ones that take over the world rather than IP-driven giants? Well, today I want to dive into that question and really figure out if a game being fun to play with your friends is really a good game after all. I want to start off by diving into one of the newest kids on the block in terms of co-op fun taking over the world. That, of course, is Helldivers 2. It's no secret that the world loves Helldivers 2. If you want to know what I think about the game, I'll have a video linked right here for you to click on where I talk about my experience with it. Also, I feel like now's a great time to mention I make content like this all the time, so if this style of video essay is something you enjoy, maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, back to the games. Anyone who spent a decent amount of time with Helldivers 2 would know that the game has something special about it. The special ingredient I'm talking about is something I like to call maximum shenanigan potential, which basically means the game doesn't stop you from mucking around or having a good old giggle with your friends. From friendly fire to comedic ragdoll physics, a tongue-in-cheek storyline, and hilarious in-game quotes, Helldivers 2 almost promotes having a good time with your friends over playing the game to win. So is Helldivers 2 a good game, or is it just fun with your friends? Well for starters, it's only one game. This won't really answer our question. But for the sake of it, yes, Helldivers 2 is a good game. It's designed well, it's got fantastic creative vision, it's even getting frequent updates. Not that I think games need that, despite what most people say. I don't think focusing on any one game will get us an answer to the question. So why don't we look at what a few of these games have in common? And I think I can nail the first point right off the bat. Something that I think most of these games do to help encourage players to have fun rather than win or be good is giving players a lot of freedom to play however they want. Think Lethal Company. You can go guns blazing and fight off creatures with your shovels and signs, or stealth through the facility leaving a friend at the ship to guide you. Or you can just trick your friends into dying in various ways. The game lets you do any of these things and doesn't really punish you too badly for doing any of them. Helldivers 2 gives you endless amounts of tools to get the job done, and so many of them have wildly varying effects on the world around you. Some guns have massive electrical currents that arc between enemies, and of course those arcs can hit your friends too and kill them. I found games that are fun with your friends are often ones that encourage you to play the game however you want. Work as a team, kill your team, do something completely unrelated to the objective. Games that let you thrive in your own creativity with your friends are the kinds of games that I have some of my favorite memories attached to. There are games that are literally chores, but they give you the option to complete these chores with your friends. Take Power Wash Simulator. I don't know about you, but in real life, I don't want to power wash anything. But even if I haven't yet, if a couple of my friends were like, hey, let's play Power Wash Simulator, I'd be down. So if something as mundane as power washing can be fun with friends, then can a bad game be fun with friends too? Well, I for one actually know a couple of people who would happily play Power Wash Simulator alone. They find it relaxing and enjoyable. But to be honest, it depends less about the game and more about the kind of player that you are. A new game just showed up as I was making this video. It's called Content Warning. It's supposed to be a lot like Lethal Company. And even though I did pick it up during its free period, I haven't actually played it yet. But the way that the game instantly got picked up by over 6 million people during its first 24 hours while it was free, people love this stuff. People love goofing around with their friends in a game that might have janky controls or bad graphics or no storyline or even meaningful objective. But if a game is lacking in those things, does it make it a bad game? I'm starting to think no. A game doesn't need to have all these flashy things to be considered good. If we look back to before the game industry was dominated by these big corporations that pump out AAA garbage every year, when a game had to have good cover art and a great back of the box to entice you to buy it in the first place. Back in those days, the flashiest graphics only got you so far, and the best mechanics only did so much for you. None of those things mattered if the player wasn't having fun. And in the current mess of the game industry that we live in, where mega corporations are laying off hundreds of people every few months because the profit projections aren't being hit, where every game needs to have competitive skill-based matchmaking and all-inclusive systems built in, I think all people really want at the moment is to have fun while playing video games. And I think that some of the only games that allow that are the ones that are built with friendship and fun in mind. When a game is being built with the intention of players having fun together, it doesn't matter if the graphics are bad or the gameplay is janky, if people are having fun, then the game has achieved what it's set out to do. So how can that be a bad game? Okay, so this is me now in the editing room and I thought I'd just have a little bit of a talk. This is just me to you, this is less scripted. I usually have quite a meticulous script I follow, but right now, we're going off the cusp, it's gonna be good fun. But I just wanted to talk about my personal journey with fun in video games. I definitely grew up loving just having fun in games. I'd love to play with my friends, not be too competitive, kind of enjoy myself, muck around, have lots of laughs. And only as I've gotten older have I really started to enjoy competitive gaming a bit more. Definitely not like really competitive gaming, I'm not like a League of Legends pro or anything crazy like that, but no, just I enjoy things like battle royales, I enjoy doing well in a first person shooter or something along the lines of that. 
Um, for example, I've been enjoying playing Apex Legends with my friends recently, and even though we're terrible, there is something really fun about doing well in a video game. And so I can totally get the argument that fun for someone in a video game is winning, and so the game being mechanically good is what helps bring them fun. So by no means am I saying that a really good mechanical game can't be fun or anything like that. Yeah, I thought it would be fun to kind of bring that up and talk about my experience in that place. Um, but I literally just recently streamed Lethal Company with the boys on Twitch and that was super fun. We loved it. So by no means am I swinging one way or the other. But um, I will definitely say I feel like you can have fun in a video game, whether it's a good video game or a not so good video game. And I think the idea of good and not good is totally subjective anyway. So let's carry on with the video. So let's pivot quickly to a mega giant in the gaming space. Elden Ring, probably one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's got some flaws, but that doesn't change the love that I have for it. Elden Ring also has co-op in it. You're able to join your friends for some sections of the game and take on the challenge together. Now, Elden Ring, in my opinion at least, is way, way better than Lethal Company. It's like not even a competition for me. Elden Ring is expansive, it's varied, it's got fantastic gameplay, and the exploration is just mesmerizing. But which game would I rather play with my friends? Maybe if it's just one of my buds who is super into Elden Ring, I'd pick that. But 9 times out of 10, if the boys want to get on and have some fun, we're playing some Lethal Company or some golf with your friends or something along the lines of that. That by no means makes Lethal Company better than Elden Ring. But for playing with my friends, it's a better option. I think where I'm going with this and where I'll hopefully end up is that the quality of a game that you are playing is important, but it's not always that important. Sometimes the lack of quality in a game can be charming. Sometimes quality for one person is different for another. Maybe you love super realistic graphics and physics systems that push the boundaries of gaming, and maybe your friend likes 8-bit RPG adventures. When we are critiquing games and judging them based on other games, we have to keep in mind that all of these creations are indeed created by people, and people are different. They come from different places, have different experiences, and desire different things. These factors won't only dictate the kind of games that they create, but also how they interact with the games that they play. So to bring it all back around to that question, if a game is fun to play with your friends, does that make it a good game? My answer really is if you love it, who cares? If a game has you captivated and excited to play it, or it makes you and your friends laugh uncontrollably and create hilarious memories together, then who cares what the world thinks about it? If a game is dubbed by the world as bad because of its jank gameplay or unrealistic graphics, but you and your friends can't get enough of it, then shut the people out and play the damn game. We're all such different people and we love such different things. If a game like Helldivers 2 or Lethal Company is able to bring so many people together and bring so much fun and joy to those people, then who cares if it's good or not? That's what I really think. So hey, maybe you love janky co-op games or maybe you love Elden Ring like me. One thing we all have in common, we love video games. So let's be united in that and have some fun together. Maybe that's the first step to helping this industry heal from the AAA wounds that it's got. Or maybe it's just a bit of fun. I think that's all from me for now. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed it enough to give it a like maybe, or maybe even subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I'll see you all next time. Peace.